How's the real estate market affecting your investment? Real estate is not a commodity. Don't join the crazy prey. Welcome to Market Talk with your host, Brian Roth, discussing today's real estate news, tips, and trends. Since I've been in the real estate business, I have been to a whole lot of home inspections. In fact, so many, I can't remember them all. There are, however, those that stand out in my memory for one reason or another, and there's one in particular that stands out, and it took place just shortly after I became a real estate agent. So I had these clients, and I had helped them find a home. We submitted an offer. It was accepted, and now we're headed to the home inspection. When we got there, we were met by the home sellers. Now, this was way before I learned my lesson about it being a really bad idea to get the home buyers and sellers in the same room and a really bad idea to allow them to have some social time together. Well, this was the beginning of my lesson about home buyers and sellers. And I was really just getting ready to watch a train wreck take place. First, let me tell you a little bit about my clients. The first time I met them, well, the first time I met the husband, he pulled up in the driveway, and we were way out in the country, but he pulls up in the driveway, gets out. Again, I did not know this man. I'd only spoken to him on the phone. Gets out of his vehicle. He yells over me, hey, just a minute. He drops his zipper, and he uses the bathroom right there, out in the front yard. Now, he did this because he was drunk, <laughs> all right? And so, you know, uh, luckily no one was home. It was out in the country, and so not a lot of homes around. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was my first meeting with him. Now, of course, his wife wasn't there, and what I found when his wife was there, he was a little bit more tame, but not by a large margin. And what I didn't know at the time was these people were really going to make me work for my money. What I can tell you about home inspections, or really just what I can tell you about working through contracts in general, if buyers and sellers are reasonable people who respect others and can see perspectives other than their own, and you have a buyer's agent and a seller's agent who are professional and understand the importance of diplomacy, you can get through just about any situation without a lot of stress and drama. Not a problem. However, this wasn't that situation. And to make things worse, the unreasonable clients, they were mine. So we were at the home inspection and everything started out wonderful and everyone was so pleasant with one another. The seller's husband and the buyer's husband, they were both on the back deck talking to one another while the wives walked through the house discussing this feature or that one. When my buyers got back together, and I was talking with them, I noticed a difference in their demeanor, but they didn't say anything to me. They spent a few minutes with the home inspector before letting me know that they were going to be headed out. Now, that's not unusual that buyers will only stay for part of the home inspection, so I really didn't think anything about it. But within just a few days after this home inspection, my clients were ready to get out of this contract. And it was really just because of something the sellers had said to them that upset them. They demanded that I put in a termination of contract, which made the home sellers and the home sellers agent start threatening a lawsuit. And then after showing them three more homes, my clients decided, mm, we really do like that other home and we want to rescind the termination of contract. Uh, good thing the home sellers never signed it in the first place. And so we picked up where we left off with the home inspection. And even though the time allowed for request and repairs had passed on the contract, the seller agreed to extend the time for my clients. When I reviewed the home inspection with my clients, they advised me they wanted everything on the list remedied. Now, I tried to talk to them about you know, the, some of the things on the list were not material defects. They didn't care. They wanted everything fixed. Just FYI, the home was only five years old, and it was immaculate. 
but they didn't care. <laughs> they just didn't care. You know, the smallest things, you know, a $5 part that they could certainly easily do when they moved in, they, they wanted it all. And the home sellers just agreed. Then right before closing, my clients asked if they could park their camper at the house before closing and asked if they could get the keys early. So the sellers met them halfway. They said, yeah, yeah, you can, you can park your camper here. That's not a problem, but we're really not comfortable giving you the keys until after closing, which is typical. So what do you think my clients did? <laughs> they threatened to back out of the contract. In fact, they made such a fuss that it put us off for a day for closing. Needless to say, I was incredibly relieved to see this finally closed. But I learned some valuable lessons. Now, I'd say with each and every contract we work, we learn a little bit more. But I was on the fast track with that one. You know, as a real estate agent, we have several roles when it comes to the home inspection. We're guides, advisors, liaisons, and sometimes we're even referees. Some of the issues I explained with my clients could have been avoided by just spending some extra time with my buyers initially and educating them about the home inspection and what was acceptable. And also that it's not reasonable to expect that the house isn't going to have any issues with it. Even new homes we're going to find issues with. Now, telling you to keep the buyers and the sellers away from each other might sound a bit pretentious, but honestly, in my experience, no good can come out of them getting together. None. And if that was my only experience witnessing this between buyers and sellers, I wouldn't even be advising it. But unfortunately, it wasn't. So let's talk about how you can help make the home inspection go a bit more smoothly and how you should be representing your buyer client during home inspection. Or better yet, here's a list of seven home inspection do's and don'ts. Number one, do advise your client to have a home inspection. In today's market, it's really tempting to not have a home inspection as a way of sweetening the deal. But I'm going to tell you, we know as real estate professionals, it's never a good idea to not have a home inspection. You don't know what's lurking in that house or what could be hiding that you just can't see just by walking through it. So you always, always, always advise them, yes, you need to have a home inspection. Don't tell them who to use for a home inspection. Now, it is okay to make referrals, but I'd suggest having a list of at least three companies, but let your client make the final decision. And then on top of that, you should let them know that they can use anyone they want. So I would say, hey, here's three referrals. Uh, I've used all of them before, haven't had an issue with them, but you can use anybody you want. Number two, do provide dates and times you're available to let the home inspector in the home. Don't arrange the home inspection for your client. They need to work that out between the home inspector and themselves, and that includes working out payment and everything else that goes along with that. Number three, do plan on being at home for the inspection and let your clients know that they're welcome to attend as well. Don't play the middleman between the home inspector and your client. Remember, during the inspection, your client is now the home inspector's client too, and so allow the inspector to do their job and interact and provide whatever information they want about the inspection as the inspection progresses. Number four, do keep up with all time-sensitive events related to the home inspection on the contract. Don't fall behind on any time-sensitive events. Doing so is going to put your client's best interests at risk, and it could risk forgoing any repairs. Number five, do review the home inspection with your clients and point out items that are material defects and make suggestions for repairs. Make sure you state the final decision is up to them and assure them that you'll submit whatever they want you to submit. 
Number six, do write up a removal of inspection contingency with the stipulations of your client's requested repairs. Don't allow your own feelings to get in the way if they're suggesting something that you believe they shouldn't be requesting. Remember, you owe your client a duty of obedience and you work for your client, even if they say, hey, I want a room painted. And we all know that you can't request a room be painted, but if they request it, you put it in the removal of contingency. Number seven, do schedule a time before closing to ensure all repairs have been completed. Now, I would just invite your clients to be there as well. And then also just let them know, hey, if you want to pay to have the home inspector do the final walkthrough with us, that's certainly appropriate. Don't allow closing to take place until either all repairs have been completed or an acceptable agreement has been made and put in writing and signed by your client and the home seller. Remember, your clients are depending on your experience and expertise to guide them through this process while looking out for their best interests. So don't take this responsibility lightly and don't take on roles that don't belong to you. Hey, thanks for joining me for another episode. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to click subscribe so you don't miss another episode of Marketing Talk.